Okay, so welcome to part two of this video in which we are uh, discussing why uh, the set of all continuous functions on an interval AB under a different metric, namely this integral metric where the distance between uh, two functions f and g is defined to be the integral between a and b of the uh, modulus of f minus g dx. Um, why that does not form a complete metric space. And this is a very good intuitive uh, point that, um, uh, well, a very important intuition point, uh, that uh, even if you've got the same set, uh, because the metric is different, that means it's a completely different metric space, basically. Uh, don't think that, you know, if you've got a set that there that there's only one metric that you can define on that, absolutely not. And if you define different metrics, it has a completely different metric space structure and uh, you know properties such as being complete do not uh, go between the two metrics even if you have the same set, basically, on which the metrics are defined. Okay, uh, so um, what I'm trying to do is come up with an example of a Cauchy sequence in this metric space uh, which does not converge to uh, another function within this metric space. So we started off with our first function f1 of x, uh, which is going to be this function defined on a, b, where we split the interval into three equal size parts, and on the first portion it's just zero. On the third po second portion, rather, it rises uniformly to the value 1, and we've uh, seen that the equation for that is this thing here, this monstrosity here, uh, and that's on the interval x plus, uh, sorry, a plus b minus a over 3, so that point there, uh, to the point a plus 2 thirds b minus a, which is this point here. Okay, um, so it's getting a little messy now, so that is our definition so far, and then obviously we'll just define it to be um, 1 on the final bit of the interval, so on um, a plus 2b minus a over 3 uh, to a plus, um, well, to b rather. Okay, so on that final bit of the interval here, from a plus 2b minus a over 3 to b, uh, which is going to define it to be 1. Now, okay, uh, so we now want to create our next, so that's going to be our first uh, function in, in, in the sequence. Now what I want to do is basically make this lines deeper. So I want to basically make it twice as steep, basically. So I want uh, to half the delta x that we're going to use. I want it to rise, basically, up one uniformly now on half the amount of delta x. So I'm going to half uh, this middle interval, basically, and I'm going to um, make it rise uh, twice as fast, basically. So my second function is going to be, and then after it's risen to one, it will just remain at one. So uh, the portion on which it's going to be 1 is going to increase, basically. Uh, so, uh, if I want to define the general term in this sequence, so remember I'm trying to come up with a Cauchy sequence, so my sequence is going to be uh, f1 of x, so this first function that we defined initially, this one here, uh, where it uh, rises uh, uniformly on that middle interval, then f2 of x is going to be the one with a gradient twice as steep as this first one, so we half uh, the interval a plus uh, b minus a over 3, and then it remains at 1 after that, okay? And then finally, we're going to continue on, and we're going to get f3 of x, which will be, uh, you divide this interval now into three pieces. So this middle interval, this interval a plus b minus a over 3 to a plus 2 b minus a over 3, uh, we're going to divide that interval into three bits, and I want it to, um, so if I draw another picture, so for f3 of x, what I'm going to do is here is the interval a, b. Again, we'll divide it up into our initial three segments. And now, this middle segment, I'm going to divide up into three pieces. And uh, basically, initially, obviously, it's going to remain at zero on this segment. And then in that first third of the middle segment, I want it to quickly rise up to one. And uh, then it will continue at one once it's reached one forever. Okay, so well, not forever until it reaches b. And uh, basically, uh, then what if I want to define f4? What I'll do is I'll divide the middle segment up into four pieces, and I want it to rise up to one in the first uh, first quarter of the middle segment, basically. Okay, so let's work out the great. Let's work out the. Um, in fact, let's work out the formula for the if um, function, basically. Okay, so this shouldn't be too difficult. So now the i function is going to be defined to be zero, firstly, on that first segment. So on the interval uh, a to a plus 
uh, b minus a over 3. So it's going to be defined to be 0 on that first bit. So that's what I've said there is that it's going to be 0 on this first bit, this first third. Remember we defined, we divided the interval a, b uh, initially up into three pieces and on that first third it's going to be 0. Then on the middle segment, we've now divided the middle segment, the middle third, up into i pieces and we want it to rise up, um, up uh, to 1 in that first i-th segment, basically. Okay, so firstly what we need to do is work out the gradient of that, um, of that, um, of that uniformly inclining uh, slope there. And then it's just going to be 1 from then onwards, basically. Okay, so what's going to be the slope? Again, delta y over delta x is going to be the slope. Delta y is equal to 1. Uh, because you're rising from 0 to 1, so you're going to change by 1. Delta x, in this case, is no longer going to be b minus a over 3. It's going to be b minus a over 3, which is the size of the um, size of the middle segment, and then divide that by i, basically, because um, you have, um, you've divided this middle segment, which had length b minus a over 3, into i equally sized pieces. So the amount of the amount of length in that initial i segment is going to be b minus a over 3i. Okay, so this is going to become 3i over b minus a. Okay, right, so that's the slope uh, of this uniformly inclining line here. Uh, right, and then what we want to do is, just like in this case, we want to work out what the full equation of the uh, inclining line is. Uh, so we will apply the formula y is equal to mx plus c. Uh, so where should we do that? We're going to have to mess up this space. So uh, our equation is going to be y is equal to m, which is 3i over b minus a, x plus c. And we want to work out what is c. And all we know is that if you plug in x is equal to this first bit here, this um, a plus b minus a over 3, so this point was the a plus b minus a over 3 here, Okay, then y should equal 0, so let's do that. So 0 is then equal to, um, to um, 3i over b minus a times the x value, which is a plus b minus a over 3 uh, plus c. So for our c value, what we get, is, just by rearranging, is we get 3... Well, firstly, let's multiply out this, so we get... Uh, C's, oh, actually, what we're going to need to do is we'll take this over to the other side, so it's going to become negative. So we we'll get minus 3i times a over b minus a, which is the bit that we get from this first bit here. So multiply it out and then take it to the other side, it'll become negative 3i a over b minus a. And then this bit over here um, is, um, well, when we multiply that out, the b minus a is going to cancel with the b minus a up here, and the 3 is going to cancel, and then all you're going to end up with is minus i, basically. So if we pull out the uh, negative i, what we get is minus i times 3a over b minus a plus 1. Okay, right. Uh, so, um, so that's our value for um, c, basically. Okay, um, so, and I'm just wondering why, why, how I managed to get that uh, you had this plus 1 up here. That might have been a mistake. Um, so we plugged in a, yes, that should have been minus 1. I do apologize for that earlier on. So that should have been a minus 1 there. So uh, correct that up and make it a minus 1 everywhere. OK, um, so this C is going to be that. So if we now uh, write out on a clean piece of paper, so I'll get another piece of paper. If we write out what our function, our i function of this sequence is going to be, fi of x is going to be 0 on the first portion of the interval, so it's going to be 0 on uh, a to a plus b minus a over 3. Then it's going to be uh, this great big equation that we've just worked out, so it's going to be uh, y is equal to 3i, so it's going to be 3i over b minus a times x plus the c value, which is um, minus i times 3a over b minus a uh, plus 1, okay? Uh, and, that, and it's going to be that on, uh, so if I draw another picture to um, help us work this out. So here is the interval a, b, 
we remember initially divided it up into three equal segments, uh, and then we defined it to be zero there. We then said divide up this middle third into i equal size pieces. So I'll just do that to help. On the first i segment, it's going to rise up to one. That's what it's doing here. And it's going to stay at one for the rest of it until it gets to b. So it's going to do this on what's this point? This point was a plus b minus a over three because it was a third of the way along this interval a, b. So it's going to go from a plus b minus a over three. And it's going to do it to a plus b minus a over 3 plus uh, b minus a over 3i because the length of this entire middle third segment is b minus a over 3. If we divide that by i, that's going to give us the length of this tiny little segment. So we're going to get b minus a over 3i. So basically what we want to do is take a plus b minus a over 3 and add on the length of that tiny i segment, which is plus b minus a over 3i. OK, so that gives us uh, what it is on that tiny little interval. And then it's just going to be 1 onwards. I'll just put so, oh, actually, I'll, we'll do it properly. It's going to be 1 from this point where this uh, uniformly inclining bit ends, which is a plus b minus a over 3 plus b minus a over 3i. And it's going to go all the way on to b. So that is basically what our i function is going to be. So uh, now what we're going to create is this sequence. This sequence is going to be the first function defined just like this, the second function defined just like this, the third function defined just like this, and it's going to go on and on, and you'll have the i term defined like this, and it will go on and on. So you've got an infinite sequence, basically, of functions. And what we're going to show is that this infinite sequence of functions is Cauchy uh, in the metric space of CAB um, is, is Cauchy in the metric space of CAB with this integral metric defined on it, and also that it does not converge to a, a continuous function in the metric space CAB uh, with uh, the integral metric on it. Uh, so the first reason, uh, first thing we need to make sure is true is that all of these functions, f1 of x, f2 of x, f3 of x, etc., that they are all continuous functions. So that should be pretty obvious from this picture. They all are all continuous functions. The way we've defined them, they're going to be continuous functions. You can draw all of these without taking your pen off the paper. So they are all continuous functions. Uh, so they are all in the metric space CAB uh, with this uh, integral metric on them. So, this is a sequence of functions in that metric space. Now what we want to see is that it's a Cauchy sequence of functions. And we'll continue this in the next video.